And now, Martin Yan, the Chinese chef. Neoma, that means how are you in Cantonese. Today's Chinese adventure takes us to the city of Shanghai, a city of 11 million people. In fact, one of the most populated places in the world. Oops, now it's 11 and 1 because every five seconds there's a newborn baby. Today we're going to show you some of Shanghai's favorite dishes. Braised pork filled cucumbers, drunken chicken, and egg treasure rice pudding. The first dish is a very wonderful appetizer. Or you can serve it as a main dish called braised pork filled cucumber. You can pork fill, you can beef fill, you can shrimp fill, you can chicken fill. Nobody cares. <laughs> now, all you really need in this particular recipe is you will need about two thirds of a pound of pork. I use pork shoulder, or you can use a ground pork, but normally the ground pork is a little bit too fat. And then you use one cucumber, cut it into one inch round. And then also have some cornstarch and also some braising sauce, which has one third of a cup of broth and a tiny bit of about two tablespoons of soy sauce and about two tablespoons of sherry and one teaspoon of sugar. And here I also have some marinade for the pork fill, filling of this cucumber. Now the first thing I want to show you how to do is, first you cut this up. I gotta side myself up. Thank you so much. <laughs> it makes me feel good. See, when you, when you get stuck cooking in the kitchen, you never have such thing. So that's the reason why I gotta cook in front of everybody. <laughs> now here, you cut everything into one inch round, about one inch, measured precisely. I always do. <laughs> exactly one inch. Yeah. See, precision is very important in Chinese cooking. You can use this kind of cucumber. This is what you call short cucumber. This is what you call long cucumber. <laughs> this is what you call non cucumber. Chinese style bitter melon. You can use this too. And if you don't want, you can also use fussy melon. This darn thing needs a little shave. <laughs> I will show you how to do this one of those days. But today, because everybody can find cucumber, but some of you cannot find fussy melon or bitter melon. That's the reason why we do cucumber. Now, all you are doing is take this off. You can use a little scoop. You see, the melon baller. How many of you in the audience have a little melon baller at home? <laughs> see, 17 out of 2 million. <laughs> You take this little thing off, you know, trim this off, trim this off, trim this off, set this aside, and then after that, if you want to make the dish looks really nice, you cut it like this, hold on to it like this, and you use your gigantic knife, you go one, through, three, four, five, six, seven. Depends on how much time you have. If you have a lot of time, you do this. It takes about two weeks to do this dish. <laughs> If you don't have time, no big deal. You just, see, you go like this. Of course, you can use a little paring knife to do it. But I normally like to use a gigantic knife because I love the challenge. Because when, <laughs> when you make one little mistake, you say bye-bye. <laughs> now, when you cut it up like this, the dish looks much nicer than when you cut it up like this. You serve these to these people that you don't really care as much. <laughs> and you serve these to people that you really care. Okay? Now, after you cut this up, I'm going to show you. We are going to marinate the pork. Now, first, you cannot marinate the pork if you don't cut the pork. So we will have a little piece. Cut up one, two, three, four, five. I want to show you how to mince this, the 
old-fashioned Chinese way. You chop it up like this. Mince pork the Chinese way with these Chinese food processor. <laughs> Believe it or not, it's all done. <laughs> and then you put them all here. Now, I want to show you, this is very easy to do. After that, we are going to marinate these with our seasoning. And then, after you marinate, you are going to fill this. In the meantime, we are going to heat up the wok with some oil right here. This is already heated up. Let us heat this up. Oh, this is heat up, hot oil, heat up. And also here, I have a frying pan because after I slightly deep fry this, I'm gonna braise it right here. See, to fill this up is very easy. Put it right here, fill this up. Now make sure you put your hand down here so you don't push nothing <laughs> out from the other side. This is ridiculous. <laughs> Look at this. Make sure you put it like this, fill it up. Fill it up, set it aside, fill it up, set it aside, okay, fill it up. Very simple dish to do, okay. When it's done, we're going to lightly deep fry this to just seal in the juice, okay. Put it in, don't drop the whole thing in. Slowly slide it down like this, like a wheel. This way, you don't splash all over the place. Otherwise, you might end up having instant pimples. <laughs> stir, stir, very good. Stir, just to seal in the juice. Don't want to overcook them. Nice and golden, seal in the juice. Let it set aside, right here. Let it set aside. In the meantime, we're gonna heat up this and let it bake brace. We'll put this cucumber on. <laughs> Never do this at home. <laughs> now if it comes out, no big deal, put it back. <laughs> Just breathe. And also I have a couple here that I make ahead of time. We're gonna heat this up and let it brace in this nice bracing sauce. Let's put it right here. Let it braise over medium high heat, okay? When it's done, they are cooked, they are delicious, they are absolutely wonderful. You heard of the uh, old expression called, cool as a cucumber. When this done thing is hot, there will be a new expression, hot as a cucumber. <laughs> I understand that Arthur over there, right there, have a Interesting question for us. Uh, yes, Martin, I was interested if you could discuss the different kinds of uh, soy sauces available on the market. Well, there are different types of soy sauce in the market. See, there are sometimes, particularly in Cantonese cooking, they have light, they have dark. But normally, in North America, the best way to get is, is the naturally fermented all-purpose soy sauce. Because this way you don't have to worry about light and dark and all kinds. See, the light color soy sauce is normally lighter in color a little bit saltier, normally used for marinade. The dark colored soy sauce is normally at caramel, molasses. That's why I say it's so dark and have that burn flavor. When you, some restaurant, they make fried rice. They'll add dark soy sauce to make the fried rice so dark you can't see anything. <laughs> and some, sometimes when you do rich sauces for braising, for stewing, you also use a, light, a tiny bit of dark soy One of the problems, most of the soy sauce that are available in the market, a lot of them are from the Far East, that have salt content up to 23 to 25%. That means they're too salty for a lot of us. But most of the all-purpose soy sauce in the supermarket are approximately 15.8 to 15.9% salt content. In fact, you can even buy some, some of the reduced sodium soy sauce, which is only 7.9%. For those sodium conscious, diet conscious people, you can get those reduced sodium soy sauce. I hope I have answered your question. Now. The next dish I'm gonna do is a very famous dish from Shanghai called drunken chicken. This is part of a nice menu. Start with these chicken. This little chicken is approximately two and three quarter pound. It looks like 
it had just hit the sauce. <laughs> and also, I have approximately half a bowl, altogether about one cup of this marinade, in which I have one cup of dry sherry. You can use Xiaoxing wine. And I also have about one third of a cup of broth and about three tablespoons of soy sauce and also one teaspoon of minced ginger. It's very easy to do the minced ginger. Simply put it right here. And Julian, this, or you can simply say, what the heck? <laughs> okay, well, magic hand. <laughs> now, when this is done, we're going to put the chicken right over here and marinate this right here. Now, uh, you normally should marinate this for at least overnight. So make sure it hit the sauce long enough. <laughs> Otherwise, you don't call it drunk chicken. Otherwise, you call half drunk rather than drunk. And then, after you marinate it for approximately Overnight, anywhere from overnight, I, I always joke with people, anywhere from overnight to two and a half months. <laughs> and then we are going to let it cook after marinade. We'll let it cook, let it simmer for about 40 minutes to an hour. All depends on how much heat you want to do. The wonderful thing about using a cooking utensil like this is you can tell what is happening. You can see through just like watching television. <laughs> Except this is the first run, it's not a rerun. <laughs> Pat over there, have a question for yes. us. Yes, thank you, Martin. I'd like to know what the origin of this particular dish is and what was it served for? What type of banquet? Normally, this can be served as an appetizer in a nice family style meal, but it also can be served in banquets in formal dinner. And basically, this can be part of the meal or it can be the appetizer you can serve with a snack or just in case you get hungry. Because all of these can be served either at room temperature or cold. See, in fact, I have a couple of these already drunk in my fridge. <laughs> when I'm ready, I'm going to go over there and pick it up. Because we have 300 people over here and two chicken is not enough. <laughs> So we have half a dozen chicken back there. Now here, this one, I have steam for you. I'm going to take it out. When I say steam, because I use very slow cooking in water. So I, after it's done, I'm going to take it out. I want to show you how easy it is to cut this up. And then I'm going to put it in this plate. Now, first, I cut this up first. Set it aside, then I cut this up and I set it aside. See? And then I cut this up. Now, I'm not quite sure how many of you know in Chinese cooking, a lot of time when they cook chicken, they don't want to overcook it. So you can still see a little trace of little red dot because they believe this way the chicken is wonderful. It's not overcooked. Take the wing out. So it does not bother you because you can put the whole chicken back together again. <laughs> now, this is kind of embarrassing to talk to the chicken. So I say, goodbye. <laughs> Nobody see anything. So the chicken won't get upset. Now, I want to show you how easy it is to cut it up. Traditionally, this dish it's done by hand shredded chicken. That means you actually have to shred it like this. <laughs> it takes us seven hours to do one chicken. But when you do it like this, you can actually do it like this. Show you. Put them all together. Oh, <laughs> all together, and you just Lay them all in here, and then after that, you are going to soak it into a wine sauce, you see? Now, there's another way of doing it. One is you cook it with the marinated chicken, okay? One is you cook the chicken, and then you use the marinade sauce. I have a bowl of marinade sauce right there. After this, you put this 
into a marinade. This is what you call double drunk chicken. <laughs> you can have one drunk or you can have two drunk. Now, I'm not quite sure how many of you know. Why did the chicken close the roll? <laughs> because the police asked for a breath test. <laughs> now, I'm going to go over to the fridge and get the one that I have already done, OK? Look at this one that I have already done. Look at this. <laughs> to make it look a little bit nice, I slightly garnish this like this. I slightly garnish this like this. And I also use a little cucumber fan. Look at this. Wow, look at this. Because chicken has to have a feather. So I put it, looks like this. Look at how gorgeous it looks. See? Bye. You have a question over there. Yes. Hi, Martin. Do you ever use MSG in your cooking? I would like to answer that question after I finish this, because this is very important. Because I want to show everybody some basic ingredient in Chinese cooking. This is my shopping list. Look. <laughs> If you can't read this, you got a problem. <laughs> now, actually, if you really want to get going in Chinese, basic Chinese dishes, Chinese cooking, all you really need is a few things. Fresh ginger root, a few cloves of garlic. Of course, I love garlic. Basic all-purpose soy sauce. Sesame seed oil. Shaoxing wine or dry sherry white pepper, or regular black pepper, of course, cornstarch, oyster flavor sauce, rice vinegar, and also five spice powder. Most of these can be kept for a long time. Of course, to answer Bai's question about MSG, I normally, when I go to Chinese restaurant, I say, Zhao Mei Jing means Goodbye. <laughs> the next dish I'm going to show you how to do is very, very simple. It's called egg treasure, rice pudding. Many years ago, it used to be called ten treasure. Somebody broke into this darn chest and took off two treasure. So I can only do egg treasure. Let's go through these. You start with glutinous rice, about one cup to two cups. It depends on how big you want to make the, the, uh, the rice pudding. One to two cups of glutinous rice, two cups of water, you let it soak. And then all the preserved vegetables and fruits. I have plum, or you can use prune, raisins, almond. Pecan nuts, you can use almond, or you can use cashew. And I also have one little red cherry. And of course, I have a pineapple ring. And also, I have syrup. This syrup is made of water, about three quarters of, of a cup of water, one third of a cup of honey, and approximately four teaspoons of orange liqueur, if you love it. For those who cannot take alcohol, don't bother. And also two tablespoons of cornstarch and one tablespoon of water. Now, when it's done, everything is there. I want to show you how easily to put this whole thing together. First, after you soak the rice, you have to cook the rice. Normally, it takes about 25 minutes to cook. Okay, cook the rice. They're nice and sticky. And then I'm going to use a tiny bit of, of these sugar. This, you have to melt the sugar in a tiny, tiny bit of, look at this, a tiny bit of sugar and honey, put them all together. Put it right here. Mix it in so it is nice and sweet. Toss it in, toss it in. Of course, when I do it at home in front of myself, I use five chopsticks to do it, much <laughs> more efficient. But you are wonderful people here, and I want to show you how you can do it, and then it takes three times as long. <laughs> now, when this is done, this is how you should do it. 
first, you put a pineapple ring right in the middle, a one of these red cherry, and then almond stack up like this. One, two, three, four, five, six. Anywhere from six to eight. Then you put some raisin around, raisin in between, okay? And then after you do this, you fill it up with rice with the cooked rice. You should do it ahead of time because you can keep it in the fridge. And all you have to do is re-steam it right before you serve. It's a wonderful menu. Put it in, squeeze it, put the rice, put the rice, put the rice, put the rice. <laughs> and after you do that, and then fill it up, and then you put plums or prunes or peach, nobody cares. <laughs> you, the old, whole idea is making it symmetrical. Put it like this. And then, and then, and then, and then, and then you fill it up again. You see, you do it by layer. Some Chinese restaurant also use sweet bean paste to put it right in the middle. Okay, you just fill it up. You just fill it up like this. And after you do that, they look wonderful, like this, see? And then you steam this over here. I'm gonna walk over here, I'm gonna steam it. Wow, a lot of steam. <laughs> now I want to mention a little about the significance of the number, the word number eight. Eight means wealth, okay? It means prosperous, fat, fat, fat. That's the reason why some of the people in, in, in the Far East, in the licensed place, say, eight, 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 means prosperous, prosperous, prosperous. <laughs> now, one of the most important tricks that I want to remind you is, before you pack this in, make sure you grease this with approximately one to two tablespoons of shortening, or oil, so when you inverted it out, the darn thing comes out. <laughs> if it doesn't come out, you are gonna have a heck of a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Let me show you. You hold on to this, and you go, hey! Come, 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 come. Oh. Wow! Oh. Look at this! <laughs> I have been practicing this for the past three days. <laughs> wow, final touch. Isn't that beautiful? See, I tell you, I have 12 of these here because I've been practicing. Because sometimes it come out eight treasure. Sometimes it come out six treasure. <laughs> but remember, the wonderful thing about this dish is when it's done, you can keep it in the fridge. That means you can prepare many of these ahead of time. When you're ready, you take it to the steamer and you cook it up and you steam it, and when you are ready, and you put this sauce on top. Now, this sauce, I have water, honey, and everything. Also, leftover pineapple juice, already cooked. We'll put it, use a spoon, and scoop it in, and sprinkle on top, it's absolutely delicious. Wow, look at this. Look at this. Because the, sh the rice is already slightly sweet, and then you serve with this sauce. This is a perfect complement to a wonderful Shanghai menu. Now, to conclude the menu, to make it just in case you have one extra guest, what are you gonna do? No big deal. <laughs> you make pineapple fried rice. How many of you like fried rice? See? See, basically, you stir fry the fried rice. The most important thing is use long grain rice. Now, I'm not quite sure how many of you know the difference between long grain and glutinous rice. This is long grain rice. Wonderful to cook this for fried rice. And this is glutinous rice. A little bit wider, stickier. It is time to say goodbye again today. Remember, if Yan can cook, so can you. Join in. <laughs>